What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to the Locked On Pirates podcast. I am, of course, your host, Ethan Smith. Hope you guys are all having a phenomenal Monday, September 19th. Okay, cool. I keep losing track of my days. Is When it gets into the month of September and stuff gets busy, you start losing track of your days. But welcome to the Monday, September 19th edition of the Locked On Pirates podcast brought to you by Bet Online. More on them later. And of course, we have Gary Morgan on today's show. We're going to talk about the Key Brian Hayes situation that was talked about on SNY this past weekend where he was involved or not involved in a play and we'll have our choice words about it. And we've both kind of had our sentiments already on social media, but we'll talk about it here more. Also, we're going to talk about what we want to see from this baseball team over the final couple weeks of the season. As the season winds down, there's not much left. So we'll see what we get from the Pittsburgh Pirates before we get to the 2022-2023 offseason. Thank you all for making me your first listen of the day every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it is your team, your Pittsburgh Pirates every day. And with that said, let's get into today's episode. You are Locked On Pirates, your daily Pittsburgh Pirates podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And just like that, everybody, welcome back to another edition of Locked on Pirates with Gary Morgan. Gary, one of these days I'm going to sit down on my uh, on my podcasting service and see how many times we've done this. It has to be in the, I would say, at least in the 50s at this point. I, it it's, has to be at least. It's got to be. It's been, it's been over a year, I think, we've been doing this in, you know, 52 yeah. weeks in a year, so... Every Monday, sometimes on Tuesdays, sometimes on other random days because one of us is traveling or working. But it's always fun to have Gary here on the podcast, as always, and the Pittsburgh Pirates. I think got a dose of, uh, yeah, you're not that good this weekend against the New York <laughs> Mets. Of course, uh, we're recording this before the final game of the series, but nevertheless, the Pirates will lose the series no matter what to kick off their sixth game kind of weird series in New York where they're going to play two against the Yankees starting on Tuesday. But of course, naturally we couldn't go this whole season without other teams saying things about the Pittsburgh Pirates. You had Dennis Eckersley say the thing about the hodgepodge of nothingness earlier this year. You've had other fan, uh, other announcers and fan bases say things about this team that quite frankly, I've covered this team long enough now to where I'm just used to it. The big thing this weekend was the key Brian Hayes situation where he was pretty much not involved in a play. And if you guys ever played Little League Baseball, you would know that your coach probably always told you that all nine guys are always involved in every play that when the ball is in play. It appeared that he did not have his glove on, which he did not. And he was going to just eat some sunflower seeds while a Mets uh, base runner was rounding third going home with Joey Cora. As you can see, it looked like Gary was falling asleep because he's probably heard this uh, <laughs> explained millions of times about this. And the reactions to this, I think, were very over the top. And I didn't understand why people reacted the way they did. Because it's not like, again, that Key Brian Hayes was involved in the play. And if you watch the entire play and your most anger on that play is towards Key Brian Hayes, of all people. You might want to rewatch that play a couple times and rethink who you should be mad about when you watch that one singular play in a, in a series where the Pirates have yet to win a game. I mean, the first thing to say about it really is if nobody slows down that play and focuses on the angle from, you know... Dominic Smith rounding third, you don't even know it happened. Nope. Um, in fact, on the Pirates feed, you you don't even see him in the play. <laughs> it literally is just a throw. Um, now, as as it's been slowed down, of course you look into it more. I'm not going to get into the debating of, of whether he should have been doing that or not. 
um, I think it's pretty clear not. Shouldn't be doing that. No. Um, should have been covering third, even if it was just a remote possibility that um, waving him was a bad idea and, and they had him hung out to dry. Uh, I think, you know, the takes that it's reflective of the team um, and being where they are probably ignores the fact that Jack Sawinski ran all the way in from left field to back up third base. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's not as though it's not as though nobody was was doing a little extra to like get into position. Um, even Mitch Keller was backing up the throw as he should have been. Correct. I mean, so everybody kind of did what they should have done. I've heard somebody break it. I think it was Tim Williams broke it down like second by second about how Brian Hayes was Snow White basically, and you know, all nothing was out of. Come on, you don't want the guy eating sunflower seeds during a play. It's it's pretty simple. Yeah. Okay. It, it's we're making we're making more out of it than we, than we need to just by trying to defend him or attack him. The guy yeah. ate sunflower seeds. Don't do it. That's all there is to it. You don't need to bench him. You don't need to like reprimand him. And of everybody on the team, everybody on the team, who in the world has more incentive to understand what the team is trying to do than the one guy that got paid? Yeah, so far, yeah. He's the one guy that we are for sure is going to be here for a pretty long time. And they released the starting lineup last night, and, and Hayes was in his usual five spot, which, may I add, in just baseball talk for a second, has been very good for him lately. Him moving down the lineup was a blessing in disguise. He's played a lot better, I think, being in the middle of the lineup than he was at the top. And I really enjoyed that, and there's another reason for that, too, because Rodolfo Castro the rest of this year needs to be the three-hole hitter the way he's playing right now. That's just actually talking about baseball. But to say that he needs to be benched for a series or benched for a game or reprimanded in some way, I could probably tell you with with a firm doubt. Now, I don't have any connection to the front office at all. So this is just what I would believe would have happened, as I'm sure Derek Shelton probably saw it. The up, upper management probably saw it, talked to him before the game yesterday, said, make sure this doesn't happen again. You're playing third base tonight like usual. And that it was probably never talked about again. I mean, you saw on social media, like, I I chose not to comment about it at all. Um, first of all, I didn't see it until it was freeze-framed and slowed down and reversed and explained. To be honest with you, and I'm old. I mean, I got glasses now. Bro, <laughs> I'm not there I, yet. I watched the video. If you didn't tell me he was eating sunflower seeds, I wouldn't have known. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I couldn't tell. But I decided instead of like just having a gut reaction, let me ask some players, right? So I asked some current players. I asked some uh, past players. I asked past players that never even played for the Pirates. Hey, what do you? What's your take on this? You know. Almost everyone was like, yeah, I'm kind of lucky this hasn't happened to me. You know, <laughs> it seemed to be more of like a uh, common common knowledge that this sort of thing happens. Yeah. And um, I don't and every single one of them admitted it was a bad look, but every single one of them seemed a little bit fortunate that they didn't have some kind of a viral moment of their own. So, I guess what I take from it is, lesson learned, I doubt you'll ever see Cabrian Hayes do something like that during a play again. And I'll also say, the next time I see Cabrian Hayes out of position when he should have been somewhere, might be the first. Yeah, realistically, and it's also the thing too that I mentioned in your uh, in the comment on your post that you had about it initially, as I said, at the worst... All this is is just another video for other fan bases to use against the Pirates like Will Craig last year with Javi Baez. I said that's at the worst what this is. Hayes is not going to get traded. He's not going to like be pushed away from the team or shut down for the year or anything. Don't worry about any of that. He's not he's going to be just fine. And as Gary just said, 
not too many times is Key Brian Hayes a bad defensive player. <laughs> and not too many times is he just not completely interested in what's going on. Also, just to say this too, and I, this is how I just firmly believe it, it's a little bit nitpicky. It really is from SNY. I don't usually say really bad things about people like that, but that was very nitpicky to me that of all the things you took away from that play was, oh, look at this freeze frame of the third baseman who's not involved in the play at all, eating sunflower seeds with his glo uh, glove off. Let me talk about this on a segment on national television or regional television for three minutes and say, yeah, this is really funny. Like, come on now. Like, I, I, I know. Stuff like this happens all the time. You know, like we... We watched uh, Rodolfo Castro the other day. He hits a home run, um, and you know he stood there and admired it for a minute before he took off. And it wasn't a no doubter. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it, it just cleared the wall a little bit. And I'm happy he hit a home run. I've loved the way that kid's been playing, but he's a he's a kid who has not hustled out of the box every time. He is a guy who will admire his home runs, and people love the fun of it, where with the competition with him and O'Neill Cruz, where they're giving it to each other, you know, in the dugout after hitting home runs. That stuff is all okay when everything's going well. When things aren't going well, everybody creates narratives out of every single instance of anything. Oh, it's reflective of Bob Nutting. Oh. Come on now. Like, especially when you put it on Cabrian Hayes. Again, the only one who's been paid. The only one that yep. probably thinks of Bob Nutting fondly. Yeah. <laughs> he gets paid. If anybody has belief that this team is going to start paying for things, it would be Cabrian Hayes. So he's certainly not going to be out there leading the charge of let's eat sunflower seeds and not play baseball. It's just a stupid mistake, just like the cell phone thing. Just let it go. Speaking of the cell phone thing, I want to see Castro's stats since that happened because I know they've got to be great. But also, I think everybody also forgot, and we'll end it here before we get into uh, our next topic of today's episode. There's another thing that Key Brian Hayes did that was a, a mistake that you haven't seen him do since it happened last year. When was the last time you remember Key Brian Hayes for getting the touch first base? <laughs> exactly. Yep. So anyways, if you want to bet on Key Brian Hayes not to do this again, which I don't know if Bet Online will have this advertisement, but they might. You never know. Make sure you check out Bet Online. It's where the game starts, and it is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all of the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week games, which have passed. We're on the week two, uh, which happened yesterday. Bet Online is also your continued source for all of your sporting wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite sports and events, including MLB, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. And Bet Online is where the game starts. So, what was very ironic before we start this is I work at a 80s themed coffee shop. In Savannah, Georgia. Guy walks in with a Steelers hat. Sees my Steelers hat. He's like, I think I recognize you. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, you host the Locked On Pirates podcast, right? I said, yeah. He's like, oh, I listen to your show every day. Just a little story time here for this. Because this will kind of speak into what we're about to talk about. He said, yeah, man, I appreciate you uh, getting the episodes out. I didn't know you work here and stuff like that. So I see... Uh, why Fridays can be tough for you. I said, yeah. He's like, man, you talk about Rodolfo Castro, Neil Cruz, and Brian Reynolds in the pitching staff a lot. I said, okay, give me something else to talk about. Stone faced, couldn't give me an answer. <laughs> I was like, well, I appreciated him either way. He was a really awesome guy, but that made me think, what do we want to see from the team as a whole for the last couple of weeks? I mean, there's a lot to look at here. I mean, the pitching staff is interesting. For starters, what I'd love to see, and I don't remember what day he could come back, but I'd love to see another Luis Ortiz start. 
after the way he looked when he came up here for that cameo start. He I don't know if we're come, get it. He he he's supposed to stay down for fifteen days after that, but I that that uh, belies an injury, and I think JT Brubaker is probably going to be done for the season. Mm-hmm. Um, if that's the case, that could be his avenue back up, and you know it'd be nice to see a little bit more of him. Uh, if not, you know, you're going to look for Oviedo, Johan Oviedo, to really um, finish strong. I think he had a really nice outing last time. I'd really like to see him keep that going. Keller, again, I think has stepped up. He's become what we'd hoped he would. And Contreras, you'll be lucky to get five innings out of him every start. Um, they, they're they really, really watching him. I, I've heard reports that he might be down to 65 pitches as their, their wishful thinking as far as a, a, an outing goes. Um, and if you want to just bring it up and whine every single outing, go ahead. But my answer is, is kind of over. I'm done answering it now. This is what they're doing. They're watching these pitchers' counts, and they're watching their innings. and That's really what the rest of the season is about, getting into the point where you can have a healthy, normal spring. That's what they want to do. Yep. And uh, the outfield competition to me is the most interesting. Jack Sawinski has straight up sucked since he came back up from AAA. And I know he hit a couple home runs, but he stinks. He has not hit anything, and he has looked lost at the plate. And uh, I worry about him long term because he really, really hit some home runs and was looking pretty solid there. But, man... You can't go on 20, 30 at-bat droughts of, of just getting nothing. No. Yeah, that cannot happen. And uh, also, that's another thing I wanted to step uh, and talk about, too, is I keep seeing all these things about the 2023 lineups and Sherrington wanting to make the team better and all this stuff, and everybody keeps adding Robbie Grossman and Tyler Nyquin and all this stuff. Me and Gary have talked about this before, and I'll talk about what we talked about this like two months ago. What incentive do the Pirates have to bring in a veteran outfielder when you have Matt Frazier, who's probably going to come up next year, Connor Scott, who's probably going to come up next year? Don't forget, Kanan Smith and Jigba will be healthy and ready to go in the spring more than likely next year, including Brian Reynolds already. Cal Matt Gorski is going to be 25. Matt Gorski. Yeah, I mean, and you already had to remove Bly Madris because there's absolutely no way he could have stayed on the 40-man with all of this. And you still have Sawinski, depending on what they do with him. Bringing a veteran outfielder into that mix is just going to screw over two or three of those guys. It just is. I, I really that's, think so. That said, you know, there's room for a veteran, I think. You know, you want somebody on there on the, on the team that that can kind of help shepherd these guys a little bit. I, I think we're seeing with Jack Sawinski, you know, it's just because you come up here and taste some success, it doesn't mean you're going to hold that success. No. I I don't like where his game's at right now. And, you know, if you're just arbitrarily putting his name in pen into a starting role next year because he's got 16 home runs, I, I think you maybe got to pump the brakes a little bit because that's a guy that we, we might struggle to, to get into a starting role next year if, if some things don't change. Cal Mitchell, can he play the position? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he can. I don't think the arm plays. You know, do they do they potentially think about moving one of them to first base? They need a lefty over there. You know, there's a lot of ways this could shake out, but I don't know. I'd bring in a veteran just because I think it's good to have a veteran. But Do you think they already have one? If, I mean, if they ben did, Gamble. it would be if they did, it would be Ben Gamble. But to me, I'd rather have a right-handed bat. Yeah. If I could get one. So uh, and and I think I just I kind of touched on this on my show the other day. It Ben Gamble's a good player. Love the way he plays. Love his hustle. But he's not a great defender. He's really not a great hitter. No. He's just a, a guy that matches what Pittsburghers like. He he's hustle. He you know he he works hard. He he tries. He's all effort all the time. Don't we want better than that? Shouldn't we want better than that? I think so. And I don't think that's Robbie Grossman either. I think they they can do better than that. 
Yeah, they they sure can. And I mean, again, I do think this off season has the potential to be one of the busier off seasons we've seen from the Pirates in quite some time. I really do, because at what point do you stop punting on seasons? This is the third year that we've done this now. You you I don't they've never specifically said there was a timeline, which I give them credit for because thank God they didn't, because if they did, they would be getting a lot of flack right now if they said an exact number. But newsflash, no front office is ever going to tell you their timeline to win. They never will, because they know if it doesn't work, they're just going to get immense heat. But I do think Ben Charrington, his track record is still pretty good, even besides of what we've seen here lately. But he has a World Series ring under his belt. The guy knows how to build a winner. He just, he does. Can he do it here? I think that's the biggest thing that you have to look to. And as far as what else we want to see from the year, we know you just mentioned the pitching. We know this pitching has to have, there has to be upgrades at this position. And I'm not talking about Tyler Anderson and Jose Quintana, who for the better part of their stints in Pittsburgh were great. But I'm talking about a guy you signed for two years that's here for a like for here for at least a year that helps this pitching staff get better, eats innings, and not only eats innings but also eats quality innings. And for people to tell me, well, why not go a little bit higher? I said the Pirates can find these gems. They've done it the last two years. They've proven to me no reason that they can't find pitching in free agency. They've done it the last two years. But this time, don't sign them to one of the journeyman one-year deals. Sign them to two years. Give them some security and give yourself some security. Make the starting pitching better because, as you alluded to with JT Brubaker, Contreras, Zach Thompson, a lot of these guys that are getting up to their innings counts, the Pirates need these guys, need these guys down the stretch of games if they ever want to compete again. How do you yeah. do that? You bring in starting pitching. So really what you want to see, you want to see kids playing, you know, a little bit better. I think Rodolfo Castro has given that to us a little bit. I've enjoyed watching him play. I think he has, more than most of them, cemented himself a spot next year. Yeah. O'Neill Cruz, for sure, going to be here. Hitting the ball a ton. Actually starting to hit a little bit better against lefties. Um, much more patient. Got to work on throwing the bat. That's weird. Yeah, that, <laughs> I mean, that's. If you guys want to be uh, talking about something and nitpicking at something, let's nitpick at that. Don't nitpick at sunflower seeds. Nitpick at the fact that O'Neill Cruz can't hold a bat in his hand right now. Yeah, at the end of the day, that it doesn't matter. But I mean, it's uh, it's just it's dangerous to be honest with yeah. you. Yeah, I was gonna say, Gary, you say it doesn't matter until the one time he does it and it ends up in the dugout and clunk somebody in the head and they're out for a month with a con like a concussion yeah so I'm, I'm just it's just something get under control it happens like look it happens it shouldn't happen four or five times a week that's no. that's excessive and you know if it's that much of a problem get get the kid some extra pine tar get him a bigger nub on the end of his bat i don't know what you got to do but do something because that that kind of can't go unfettered forever but all in all, you know, the, the youngsters that, that are showing up are showing up. And I, I kind of like where they are. Even Michael Chavis, I think, has had an underrated season this he year. Has. He has. He really has. He's, put, he's, he's taken some home runs. He's hitting better against righties, which actually makes me wonder if they should have let him try a little earlier. So I would like to see them almost finish the season out letting him face righties the rest of the way. See if maybe you can feel comfortable with him as your 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 main first baseman and allow yourself the room to wait for Malcolm Nunez or Mason Martin to to make it over there, or even Andy Rodriguez or Henry Davis. You know, get to the point where um, he's he's kind of your bridge as yeah. opposed to needing to bring one in. And also, too, the cool thing is if everybody thought the youth movement was hitting hard this year, just wait until next year. Andy Rodriguez, Henry Davis, Matt Frazier, Matt Gorski, Connor Scott, Quinn Priester, Michael Burrows, maybe even Cody Bolton, maybe even Tanaj Thomas. A lot of these guys have real shots to be on the team at some point next year and make an impact on this team. That's what I think is going to be fun about 2023 is this team, at this point, the way I look at it is uh, one of my 
colleagues at WSAV where I cover the high school football games as a Jets fan. He said the best thing about being a Jets fan is you start at the bottom and can only go up. <laughs> the Pirates right now, realistically, are still at the proverbial bottom. The only way they can really go is up. That, I mean, that's all you got to think about as a Pirates fan right now is it can only really continue to get better. I don't care about the record anymore. I, I know I was talking about the 100 losses thing. Gary last year talked to me about it, and I kind of have the same sentiment he had last year. It doesn't matter if this team w loses 99 games or 100 games. It'll mean something in the clubhouse if they don't lose 100 games to them for a couple weeks, and then they won't even remember when spring training starts next year. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter, but it kind of matters, if, if that makes sense. Like, last year, you know, obviously they, they, they lost 100 games. You'd like to think that this year they, they improve at least numerically. You know, yeah. you'd like to see them get to, like, 99 losses. It, just make a little bit of a dent in that. A little bit of some kind of a sign that, yeah, we understand it didn't turn around, but at least maybe we put the brakes on, right? And like we're we're ready to start our ascent now. That's that's what you'd like to see, and you'd like to see it come from these kids. That's really the the point. I don't want to see it come from Ben Gamble having a two home run game. I want to see it from Rodolfo Castro doing it, and I want to see Cal Mitchell fueling it, yep. and I want to see Brian Reynolds and Brian Hayes stepping up. That's what we want to see. That's that's the entire lineup right now. Yep. And Youth stinks in Major League Baseball. Youth stinks. And I'll tell everyone, you know, to a man, you're 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 right now actively talking about how great the Orioles are playing this year, right? And and you're completely ignoring how terrible they were last year when their team was filled with kids. And kids get better. Yep. So over the off season, and then you bring in even more. Adley Rushman comes up, and all of a sudden, things are starting to gel. That's the future of this team, regardless of how cheap and miserly their owner is. That's where it's headed. Is it enough for a championship? I, I'm not going to sit here and say that. I'll tell you, in Baltimore, it's not going to be, unless they spend money. It's not going to be here either, unless they spend money. But that's not the part of the story we're at. No. The, that story still has a lot of chapters. And just for, uh, for sake of for everybody wondering, 16 games left in the year, Pirates have to go 8-8 eight and eight to avoid 100 losses at least. 500 baseball. That's all they got to play to avoid 100 losses. You might say, eh, that might be a little difficult. Seven of those 16 games are against the Chicago Cubs and the Cincinnati Reds. So there's a real shot that they can pull that off. But, Gary, any other sentiments about this team and what you have going on this week before we head out with these wonderful people? Uh, five thoughts at five. Um, make sure you check out the new HTP podcast on DK Pittsburgh Sports. I'm hosting that with Corey Crisson. Um, and the uh, Pirates Fan Forum comes out every Friday on the same network. Make sure you check that out and get in touch with us if you want to be on. Oh, yeah. And you guys already know I'll be back tomorrow uh, recapping the Mets series on Tuesday as well as previewing the Yankees series. Let's not forget the last time the Pirates played the Yankees, they actually beat them two times out of three. Let's not talk about the loss in that series. So we'll see what the Pirates can do with the Yankees as they wrap up their New York Subway series series, I guess, if you will. <laughs> Um, but with that said, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Locked on Pirates podcast, as you always do every single day. And I will see you guys on the flip side. Gary will be back next Monday.